Where life is full of suffering, its causes are desire. Nirvana is the end of it, extinguishing the fire. To reach the end of suffering, we walk the Eightfold Path. Right view is the first step, meditation is the last. Good morning. A rare red sunrise. So, looks like uh, spring is here. I mean, rainy season is here. We're getting sprinkles, little sprinkles now and then. Proper monsoon hasn't started though. Yeah, India's in big trouble for lack of rain. Or, more properly, for lack of proper water management. I'm very fortunate here. I live right next to a big lake. Or not right next, half a kilometer. But the water table here is really excellent. In other places, people are already drying up. Wells are going dry. Trees are dying. <clears throat> In a couple of years, this is going to be a real mess. So, anyway, why do we have to begin from sex? Somebody asked me. Why, why does this secret heaven, noble path, begin from sex? Huh? So many religions, so many spiritual teachings, so many gurus and so on, try to deny sex. They try to say it's sinful, it's bad, it's material, blah, 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 you know, <laughs> lust and this and that and enjoyment. But many of them are actually indulging behind the scenes. <laughs> I know that was the case when I was a monk, both in the Hare Krishna group and in the Buddhist temple. Gosh, that's a beautiful sunrise. <clears throat> anyway, the, <laughs> the colors are exactly the sannyasi colors, or the monk colors. Dig it. I don't know if you... There. You see that saffron reddish color? That's the color of celibacy. It's a dress code. It's a cultural uh, signal that you are not in the relationship market. <laughs> Yet, a lot of these so-called sannyasis and gurus freely partake of the energy of their disciples. And, and really, that's the way it has to be. I mean, who else is there <coughs> for a spiritually advanced person to, to partner with? Who else is going to understand his motivations, his inner state, his moods, and so on, except his disciples? So I got in big trouble the last time I taught because I switched the game on my disciples. <laughs> I started out with a very narrow context, and then I tried to expand that context unlimitedly into, uh, well, into tantric practices, and they couldn't deal with it. They could not compute how you go from celibacy-oriented worldview, uh, gestalt or ontology, to a sex-positive worldview. Well, you have to start from what your body is telling you. Your body is telling you, I need this. <laughs> I got to have this. Huh? It's a hunger. It's a craving, like food. Okay? Now, one can and should learn to control one's cravings. That is true. 
Otherwise, they will control you. <laughs> but, and that's part of Tantra too. Uh, for example, peop, one guy was asking me yesterday, how often do you have an orgasm? I, and they said, oh, about twice a month. One near the new moon and one near around the full moon. Usually not directly on either one, but just before or after. <clears throat> and he said, wow, well, what, you know, what's it like? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Mr. Peacock. <laughs> it's like that. <laughs> it's very loud. And uh, <laughs> kind of like a nuclear... Uh, Explosion of shock waves go on for a long, long time. <laughs> this is my buddy, the peacock. <laughs> He's in the tree right across from the roof where I'm standing. Can you see him? No, the light is wrong. Anyway, how do you go from the cultural assumption that sex is bad, wrong, ugly, or fattening, or whatever it's supposed to be, to sex is okay, sex is natural, sex is all right. Well, you have to listen to your body. You have to observe nature. See how unaffected animals are, because they don't give sex too much meaning. Uh, it's just another bodily need to be satisfied in the right season. Okay, so what is the right season for Tantra? Well, youth, of course. But it's, it, it continues to be valuable even up through maturity. Uh, I'm so glad I started out from Tantra because Tantra is the root of all energies. <coughs> and that's the bottom line. Your body runs on energy. You know, we're talking about water shortages here, you know. The spine is like a river of prana. So the river can only flow as much as the headwaters bring into it, isn't it? If the headwaters of a river dry up, like the mountains or wherever it gets its rainfall, then can, can the rest of the river be as strong? No way. So, in the same way, the lower chakras, sex, energy, and movement, cannot be allowed to atrophy. They cannot be allowed... See, this is what's happening in Western society especially. Everybody's trained in school to sit with their legs together on a hard chair for I don't know how many hours a day, at least six hours a day. And this has the effect of closing the root chakra, closing the sex chakra. Uh, you know, of course, yeah, when, when you're young and crazy, you can override it, but it becomes a habit underneath your conscious awareness. That tension, huh? Keep a tight asshole, bro, you know? <laughs> so, that closes down. It's the same as the headwaters of a river going dry. It's the same as if you put a dam upriver and close the gate. Uh, it's just like, it's just like, uh, well, you're going to run out of gas, you know. <laughs> and we see it. I've, I've met other men my age and talked frankly about sex. And they're saying, I haven't had an orgasm in years. I haven't even had an erection. You know, sex, what's that? <laughs> and here I am, you know, at my age, um, basically having sex every day. <laughs> so, <laughs> this is another thing to consider. What happens in old age? A gerontological... Sexology is a very underdeveloped field, which is too bad for all the old people now, huh? All us boomers. <laughs> people, you know, you guys, you want to blame everything on the boomers. 
but we inherited a broken system too, right? It just wasn't quite as broken as it is now. And, and the reason why is that overpopulation is straining all resources. There's no room for waste. But the current system that was built, the infrastructure, uh, is, is uh, designed for waste. It's, it's designed to be inefficient at, uh, bec uh, because they wanted to optimize other things. So, hey, there's plenty of water, why not, you know? It's cheaper to build this less efficient infrastructure. So now we're stuck with it. An infrastructure project could take 50 or 100 years, you know, to completely revamp India's uh, water infrastructure. It's just, it's, that's why the politicians haven't touched it. It's just, and the expense would be insane. So because nowadays, we, you know, countries have to put that money, that kind of money, into defense because of the competition of all the other countries. If India turned inward and started to redevelop its infrastructure, there's no doubt that China and uh, Pakistan and whoever else wanted to, you know, would try to uh, make inroads on their respective borders and so on. Anyway, don't close the gates. See, or if they're closed, open them up again. Well, how do you do that? Well, we know how to do that. <laughs> That's what Iron Shirt Qigong is all about. Huh? Opening up the gates of the lower chakras. Now, some people are going to say, well, that's like opening Pandora's box. And I, I agree. I agree, it is. Pandora's box, you don't know what's inside. It could be dangerous, right? Um, but what really is inside is all this repressed energy. A lot of stuck energy. So that energy has to be unstuck, <laughs> dissolved, and brought into motion, right? And when the pumping exercise is specifically for that. The one we showed in the video before last, I think, uh, standing, horse stance, negung. Uh, negung, um, you're pumping the energy through the root chakra and the sex chakra into the energy storage area, the, the uh, Dantian. Huh? And how do you do it? <laughs> it's very interesting. By restricting your movements in a certain way and by having the movement follow the breath. See, this is superior to uh, ordinary pranayama where you're not really moving. You're exercising the breath, but you remain in a sitting posture, and you know you, you might move, but not a whole lot. Whereas the uh, neikung and related exercises use the whole body uh, and the whole energy. That's the secret. You need your whole energy to get through a long session of neikung, right? And yet, especially afterwards, you feel like it gives you energy. That's because it does. <laughs> it liberates that stuck energy and pumps it through the sex chakra and makes you feel really good. Oh yeah, you'll also notice an increase in sexual performance, sensation, orgasm potential, and so on. But my advice, and the advice of Qigong in general, is yes, enjoy the enhanced energy, but don't ejaculate. Don't have an ejaculative orgasm for men. And don't have a vaginal orgasm for women. Instead, have an energy orgasm, which is similar to a clitoral orgasm in women. And there's <laughs> no real comparison in men. Um, I was trying to talk to a friend of mine about this yesterday, and he says, I can't imagine what an energy orgasm would be like. 
<coughs> well, just imagine a regular orgasm, but without ejaculation. The energy moves in a certain way. It moves in waves. Huh? Big waves. Tidal waves. <laughs> so, by allowing that energy, but without the physiological response, you can have many energy peaks like that. And, and that's known as a level six orgasm. Huh? Male multiple orgasm, sometimes known. So, anyway. We have to begin from sex, because sex is the source of energy for the whole body, for the whole being. Huh? How does a being come into being? Through sex. So, look at the power. Huh? The manifestive power of the goddess, the mother. See, how can you not worship that? How can you not respect that? You know, you'd have to be an idiot. <laughs> and there are plenty of idiots in this world. But what I'm trying to get at is we all have that power within us. And that is how we create our bodies. Uh -huh. It's the power of becoming. The Paticca Samuppada describes the stages of becoming. From ignorance through sankhara through consciousness, name and form, and six senses, and so on. All the way down to birth, suffering and decay, and death. So, suffering and decay are inevitable, but actually nobody really dies. Only the body dies. Only the meat animal stops functioning. <laughs> The rest of the body, the energy body, the mental body, the bliss body, huh? and pure awareness, they all function perfectly. So what do they do? They go on and create another bodily shell. <clears throat> now, religion, in the traditional sense of worship of a deity and so on, bhakti, devotion, and the performance of the associated rituals, karma yoga, is to accrue pious credits. And what does that do? That gives you the right and ability to create any kind of uh, between lives experience. Yeah, it's a dream. It's a dream. It's something that you fashion out of your imagination and project on the world. But how is that any different from what we're doing now? Anyway, <laughs> so the, the uh, Vaikuntha of Bhakti, for example, is a dream. Learned from the scriptures and projected. right? And if you project it enough times and create enough thoughts, then when you leave the body, that's, there you are. Right? In your projected thoughts, in your mental body, in your energy body. So, it doesn't have to be learned from a book. It can be spontaneously created. And in, the, in most cases, it probably is um, a mixture of both, you know. People's beliefs plus their uh, desires, unfulfilled karmas and so forth. And that all goes into making a body. Well, guess what? The body-making and becoming process is happening all the time, not just from one life to the next. So Paticca Samuppada is the guide, and Paticca Samuppada shows how the being comes into manifestation through sex. So that's where that fits in. You see, it's all connected. Rather than say it's all one, I'd rather say everything is connected at the level of unconditioned awareness. At the level of mind, it's different. <laughs> Each individual thinks he's a separate being. Uh, but on the level of unconditioned awareness, you know, pure, pure consciousness without any object, it's the same everywhere, in everything. <laughs> 
So that opens up all kinds of interesting possibilities, which we're going to discuss uh, further in later episodes. Om Tat Sat, Buddha Saranai.